regional in 2020, won a regional in 2019, got top eight at the European International Championship in 2019, and the Latin American International Championship in 2018. So the last three years have been pretty kind. Brent's been on a bit of a roll. Yeah, I think one of the most consistent uh, international players that we've seen, actually, Brent has really been impressive at the highest level. For Francesco, a top 32 at a recent regional championships, not too shabby at all. Um, kind of newer onto the scene, but certainly making a big impression. Absolutely. And top cutting those regional championships, not an easy thing to do at all. So let's head on over to the game and see which of these slightly different Pikachu and Zekrom lists will be coming out on top. And it looks like we're going to be following Brent's journey through this game. Yep, yeah, certainly does. And uh, he is going to be the player going first in this game one in the best of three series in the winner's side of the bracket. So a little bit more calm for both of these players. Obviously, you still don't want to lose, but uh, it's not quite as nerve wracking for both sides. No, not at all. And there's a decent opening hand. You've got your Bolt Undactive, which is always a good start to get that Electrify rolling. You've got Electromagnetic Radar to search out whichever two Pokemon you actually want. Has to drop a Crushing Hammer into the discard, which isn't ideal. But when you're essentially swapping it for a Pikachu and Zekrom and a Raichu and Alolan Raichu, which really are your two main attackers and give you the most options here, probably a fair trade. Yeah, it's reasonable. Um, it's a little bit awkward getting rid of these crushings. Uh, they can be big swing turns, especially uh, when, uh, when Francesco is quite often looking to electrify in the early turns. If you can get those crushing hammer heads, they can be a big deal. And unfortunately, the coin flips will be quite important throughout this series, to be honest with you. Um, but Brent's drawn into a decent hand uh, from that. He can quick wall to try and work towards um, his own Tapu Koko Prism Star here to try and set up for a turn two full blitz. I think that's got to be the line here. I think so. And he's got that speed lightning energy to draw two cards. It is worth noting that there was a second Crushing Hammer, which did have to get discarded with the Dedene. So both players might be playing four Crushing Hammers, but Brent is already down to two before Francesco's actually even attached an energy here. So... If it's going to be a match where those crushing hammers are going to be vital, Brent's put himself at a bit of a disadvantage early on. But this is a pretty nice ball position he's building up. Yeah, pretty okay. And just pretend you flip tails. That's always my feeling with crushing <laughs> hammers. If ever you have to get rid of them in the early turns, just pretend that you flip tails on them. It makes you feel a lot better, I'm sure. Yeah, me, me and flippy cars have never really gotten on too well, but Crushing Hammer's just too good. You know, you get to remove an energy on a coin flip heads. There is a reason so many players are playing it, despite the fact there is a 50% chance that you've just played a card that does nothing. <laughs> but when it does something, it, it's a big something, that's for sure. Francesco actually starting by quick balling away his guaranteed energy disruption. The Team Yell Grunt has just hit the discard pile there by the looks of things, and he's going to have his first search of the game. I think when you're the person going second as Pikachu and Zekrom, you're almost always looking to electrify. It's very rare that you'll try and make any other play. Now, you do play energy switches um, to try and make some crazy turn one full blitz plays, but it's quite rare uh, the way that we've seen Pikachu and Zekrom adapt recently. It's gone more defensive with the likes of Crushing Hammer, with the reset stamps, the high Marnie counts, rather than going towards, you know, full turbo, draw as many cards as possible, try and get that full blitz. It's much more reserved in the current day absolutely we do see a second quick ball coming down here and there's a crushing hammer going down from francesco so it's almost like they just heard us say how important crushing hammers were and they're like ah, we'll show you <laughs> we do see the bolt on coming down and the pikachu and zekrom there's a hammer and it is a head so oh, <laughs> who needs team yow grunt yeah, well, both players now two Crushing Hammers down and Francesco able to research for a fresh seven cards here. And he's basically just looking for Air Balloon or Switches because uh, he's quite happy to electrify onto Pikachu and Zekrom at this point. He can draw into any Electro Radars or Cherish Balls as well if he wants to, or Quick Balls, I should say, uh, if he wants any other targets. But right now, the Switch is pretty good to go, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, you, you call that the Electrify play yourself. That is exactly what we're going to see here. We see a big charm coming down onto Pikachu and Zekrom, giving a little bit more bulk to try and survive some hits in future turns. We see an Air Balloon on the Bolton to give free retreat for the future. And a Cherish Ball for the Dene, because Francesco is not apparently tired of drawing cards yet. <laughs> so the Dene comes down, new hand of six, and this has been a very strong opening turn. 
yeah, I think he's got to be happy with that. I think the only thing you'd really be working towards would be a supporter for the next turn if you wanted to. The thing is, he had boss's orders in his hand, but no energy. So I think that's the reason why we saw the Dede change, because quite often you want to be the one dictating damage on your opponent's tag teams, because you never really want to hit into the Boltund. That's why you can see so clearly why they're both in the active for either player, because they only give up two prizes. You'd much rather be the person taking the initiative on the tag team. That's always the most important thing, I would say. And we see Brent really going down a slower route here. There was an option to Tapu Coco, energy switch, attach, and actually get the full blitz going with that switch. He had all the cards in hand that he needed, but instead chooses to electrify with the Boltund, getting a couple of energy out. Didn't even play his Professor's Research, didn't play the Dedene, just essentially went, you know what, all I want to do here is attach an energy and electrify. The turn was getting three more energy on the board, really trying to essentially match what Francesco's done here. That was a very reserved of turn yeah i think it's the correct play though uh i think you're just forcing francesco to have uh, boss's orders plus energy at this point and hoping that your pikachu and zekrom stays safer in the back uh it's so often just based on getting damage on those tag teams as quickly as possible francesco is also going to try and look towards getting his own raichu and alone raichu into play at some point here possibly the mewtwo and mew that he also plays those are the things that are going to be on his priority list this turn but he doesn't need that much right now no, no, not at all. We do see a quick ball coming down here. Gets rid of a recess stamp. Now, that's two recess stamp that have come down, so into the discard pile. That could mm -hmm. be relevant as we move on through the game. We see an Elder Goss being searched out. So you said about getting a supporter. Turns out it's boss's orders. There is the boss's orders. And, I mean, no, no prizes for guessing that it's going to be <laughs> Pikachu and Zekrom here. And we got the energy. We've got the free retreat. We see a Vikavolt coming down, potentially opening up some plays for for train a lot or item lot later on and we just see a full blitz you said yourself joe that getting the damage onto those pokemon early is key well francesco's just got the first lot of damage down on that tag team yeah it's exactly what brent was fearing basically he was trying to just allow the bolton to be the fodder there but francesco able to piece together the means of full blitzing straight into uh brent's pikachu and zekrom and you're feeling quite behind if you're Brent here, to be honest. Your hand's not going very far. There's nothing that you'd rather boss's orders, I don't think, with Eldegoss here. Your opponent's got a low hand size, so there's no disruption coming down. I think you're just throwing away the entire hand, accepting that you're probably just trying to full blitz on to Raichu or Alolan Raichu. I think the only thing going for Brent right now is that he still has crushing hammers around and he still has his reset stamps, which isn't the case for Francesco. No, and I think that's got to be the play. We're going to see a lot of cards going down. We see switches going down, which could be huge if we see Tandem Shock being played. You know, getting rid of your switches means getting out of paralysis becomes a lot more difficult. And we've, we've got some cards there. We're just really going to see an attachment. We've got things like Energy Switch, Reset Stamp, Boss's Orders. They're not doing anything this turn. So, presumably, we're just going to see a full Blitz and... It's never a good feeling when you're playing a mirror match, you're playing the same deck as your opponent, and you're essentially doing what they're doing, but a turn after they're doing it. Yeah, I think for Pikachu and Zekrom specifically, you, you still ha you hold out some hope because you can dictate reset stamp quite nicely, and then you can get creative with your bolt end and make the prize race a little bit awkward. Um, but right now, Francesco's not too concerned about that. The only thing I'm slightly concerned about is uh, the state of his board, like the only attackers that he have uh, has accessible. If you weave in your Bolton now, um, you're kind of afraid of getting bosses ordered back on your Pikachu and Zekrom that's now heavily damaged. I think that's the play we're going to see here. Again, it's just the sort of make them have it kind of approach. But Brent's turn is looking great next turn. He could bosses orders and reset stamp here. So that's looking pretty good for him. It's actually going to get moneyed away, which I think is important <laughs> for Francesco here. Yeah, that is a, I mean, it's a great play. Doesn't know quite how great it is. Can't see his opponent's hand, but that was absolutely huge. We do see a crushing hammer as well. That is a head getting an energy. It's going to be off the bolt on or the, it's going to be off the bolt on there. Just making life a little bit more difficult, making Brent have the energy and also taking down the damage output. As we do see bolt on taking a KO on Pikachu and Zekrom going up by free prizes and that was a really big turn getting the ko getting the money and really putting brent on the back foot there certainly does and brent's got a big turn ahead of him he's got crushing hammer that does get a heads for him which is really nice he does have some hand disruption which is reasonable but he may be forced to start dead changing here and digging for some bigger turns attaching the fifth energy to the Raichu alone and Raichu allows him to lightning ride for a knockout here for the first two prizes that he'll take and he's actually accepting the Marnie here 
um, as his best move. Uh, you can see a Celtic Swell coming down as well, and looks like he's just happy to use the Raichu Raichu here. I mean, he's going to take a KO. He's going to take a couple of prizes. He's going to get a free prize attacker out of the active, switching for that bolt on when he attacks. So kind of forcing Francesco to have some kind of boss's orders if he wants to start attacking into the free prize Pokemon. Because that's the goal here. Either make your opponent KO two two prize Pokemon or a two prize Pokemon plus a free prizer. Try and make it as awkward as you possibly can for them to take their remaining prizes. But then again, you've kind of done that a little bit to yourself because you still need to go through probably the tag team and the two prize Pokemon on the bench. It does mean two attacks to win, but it probably means a couple of bosses orders as well. And look at this, Francesco is going to be getting creative with his Vika Vault here. He's going to bring up this Raichu and Alolan Raichu with bosses orders. And if you're using Paralyzing Bolts uh, just for the 50, you're then forcing a retreat, a manual retreat on this Raichu Raichu, which then makes the Bolt End really ineffective because you're removing so many energies from play. So Francesco using this Vika Vault just to buy some time here. And it's going to do a great job for him by the looks of things. Yeah, I love this because obviously Raichu and Alolan Raichu, it needs to switch in and out to get the extra damage. It's use a GX attack, but then Boltun doesn't get a KO because you have to discard the energy to retreat. And a couple more attacks would have actually taken out the Raichu and Alolan Raichu. So you, you kind of have to retreat or else you're just giving it up and giving up the game. So it's kind of forcing your opponent into a play they don't want to make, but they realize if they don't make that play, they're going to lose the game anyway. And oh, look, now that that Vikavolt hasn't been KO'd, in comes the Pikachu and Zekrom, down comes the Marnie, and Brent's attacking a lot without taking a lot of prizes. And Francesco is really looking for another attachment here. It looks like he's going to uh, go towards getting the Tag Bolt GX, if I would think of anything here, just to uh, remove this Bolt End and leave just a Raichu remaining. This is exactly what we're going to see. Going down to one prize card remaining, only one threat left on the board for Brent. And when you have the Viker Bolt in the background, the Raichu can't, you know, happily pivot in and out anymore, and its damage output becomes way less dangerous. So nicely identified from Francesco here to weave in the Viker Bolt when it's important. No, that was, it was a little play. It was one turn of 50 damage, but it made a huge difference. Raichu and Alolan Raichu is great when you're switching in and out the active, but when it's stuck in the active, it, it's just hitting for 80 damage. And in this matchup, 80 damage with nothing else, it's not enough. So we do see the switch being grabbed there off the draws, which is huge. Does mean can now bring up the Raichu and Alolan Raichu and get that big damage down. But then you've got to ask the question of, well... Can he keep switching in and out to keep getting that big attack off? Are there enough resources to even build up another attacker? Or are you forced into having to switch in and out to get big attacks off? And Brent is simply looking for reset stamp here. Now that there's uh, the Dedene on the board, there's such easy prizes for Francesco to take. The Crushing Hammer got tails, so that Vika Vault is hugely threatening. This Crobat for four cards. There's two reset stamps in the deck. He does it's find both. both. That's really big. <laughs> That's a really big deal. This is coming down to the wire here because we know that Brent, now with the air balloon, I think you always attach the air balloon to the active, don't you hear? Are you a little... Uh... That's interesting because I'm very concerned about if Francesco doesn't have the means to game, he would just simply paralyzing Bolt again. Oh no, just the 80 from Raichu is enough. Okay, so this is absolutely fine. Yeah. It so was yeah, he's holding on to game by the looks of things. Yeah, and now we're going to see, you know, a boss's orders would end the game right here because Vikavolt can do some damage. We don't see that. We see a Crushing Hammer Tails. Is the other card relevant? Sure has to be. <laughs> it has to be, because right to learn and right to even you know, I keep talking about how that 80 damage attack isn't very good. Well, you know what? Right now it'll do quite nicely. And it will win the game. It will end it. So if that last card for Francesco Ooh. isn't... Oh, we see a manual retreat getting all the energy off the board, but it's not going to matter because Brent's got boss's orders, brings that Vikavolt back up. We see the uninspiring tandem shock for 80, but it's still <laughs> enough to inspire a victory there. Yeah, really up impressive stuff from Brent. Yeah, up one game, exactly. And uh, he was on the back foot, wasn't he? He was uh, an attack behind almost the entire time until the reset stamp. And reset stamp is such a vital tool in the PK and Zekrom's kind of toolkit because they have such high hit points on the tag teams and uh, they can always target down threats on the opponent's side. Uh, they don't have any awkward um, sort of attack text most of the time so they can pick and choose what they want to take out. 
and uh, the setup damage on the Viker Vault was really important for him with the Bolt and on the turn where he paid retreat and uh, it was nice to see him mapping out his prizes and the Crobat digging into the reset stamp with really good odds to hit it uh, gave him a fantastic window of opportunity to take the win against Francesco there. Yeah, those last couple turns especially were very, very well played. We talked about the fact that having to manually retreat into the bolt on wasn't exactly what you wanted to do, but sometimes you got to look at that board and if you're a good enough player, you can go, well, you know what? If I can do this, 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 and this, I can still win. You're relying on your opponent not drawing the boss's orders. That still would have ended the game. But then again, you're filling out your deck as much as you can. You're digging as deep into your deck as you can. And you're making it as difficult for your opponent as you can. Yeah, there's a chance Francesco hits the boss's orders and you lose anyway. But a lot of the time, when you've got games that are this close, all you can do is give yourself the best chance of winning. It's hard to guarantee it, but if you can build the game like that if you can build your board you can give yourself a chance and say look i have got myself in a position where i can win can you stop me and the answer in that game was no yeah and interestingly actually francesco's crushing hammer play the last clutch crushing hammer it may have been brent's last energy as well so it may have genuinely been a coin flip whether or not he was going <laughs> to win or lose that game and uh, if the margins are that fine it's uh, it's going to be really cool to watch the next couple of games Oh, absolutely. So let's just head straight into game two then and see what's going to happen here. Of course, we saw one of the players being behind for a couple of turns. And in the end, it almost mattered, but not quite. So we do see Francesco there saying, second, please, if you lose a game in a best of three, you get the chance to choose whether you go first or second the next turn. Going second, good play. Yeah, absolutely it's no secret as to why he's doing that he wants to weave in the bolt end as quickly as possible uh brent even being the player going first was still electrifying anyway uh, on his second turn of the game uh, and that's partly because crushing hammers can come down and flip heads but also because it's quite a big combination to try and get full blitzing uh from going second so brent once again drawing all of his crushing hammers early <laughs> um, we've got a very similar opening hand electromagnetic radar to crushing hammer but you've got electromagnetic radar to search out your pokemon you've got an energy but we've got that same decision as in game one do you grab the dedene discarding your entire hand you lose the energy switch the switch the two crushing hammer it's you don't want to lose them but the alternative is you have a very slow turn one here and then you Marnie next turn. And Marnie isn't an aggressive supporter. It doesn't grab you a lot of cards. Mid to late game, getting a few cards, slowing down your opponent is good. But in the early game, when you really want to set up your board and get that tempo rolling, playing a Marnie on turn two after not playing the Dene turn one, it looks a little bit slow. And Brent does seem to be saying here, I don't want to lose my crushing hammers, two of them on turn one for the second game in a row. But I probably don't have much choice if I want to get set up here. Yeah, he does. He has the choice of simply attaching to the Pikachu and Zekrom and passing if he really wants to. And yeah, I think it's a decent choice, to be honest, because you can deny the Electrify uh, quite nicely, even though he's not worked very much in terms of getting towards his own full blitz. I think he'll also be looking to Electrify just like he did in the first game. <laughs> so he's just hoping to get some value from these Crushing Hammers without overcommitting here. I mean, you know, this is the, you know, the more moderate approach here. It's, it's saving those crushing hammers. And look, you've got two. Hopefully you can hit at least one here. And then you can do Dene or Marnie and hopefully start getting some, some more stuff going. Although the fact that you searched out the Dene probably means it is still coming down just after the crushing hammers. Mm -hmm, exactly. Just hold on to those. Try and get some value where you can and see, uh, see if it is awkward for Francesco then to get into those higher damage attacks. And we do see Dedene coming down from Francesca here. No crushing hammers going down. Did see a Team Yow grunt, but we do see the Dedene drawing a new hand. And we've got a big charm on the Pikachu and Zekrom. So it's like we keep saying, you want your bolt on, your energy, your switching card, get Electrify. But Francesco's not doing much he does have electromagnetic radar here but that's not going to grab a bolt hunt because bolt hunt isn't a pokemon gx so it might be that electrify isn't coming down and we're seeing a, a pivot into a different strategy here from francesco as it stands he hasn't played any energy and you've got to think after having your opening hand down to Dennett, there's got to be an energy in hand right Makes me think he's got Crobat in his hand exactly because he's only taking one target out with the radar here. He's also playing a bunch of cards down. This is likely going to be a Crobat uh, or a Research. Yeah, Research also a decent option. Choosing not to speed Lightning even though it can draw you some cards because this is the thing he wants to attach to. He's finally found his Bolt and he's going to switch into that. He does find the basic energy and now can Electrify. Uh, so pretty decent turn. 
Uh, we're seeing the energies actually going on to the Mew to a Mew Tag Team GX that allows him the flexibility of either of the other two attacks, either Full Blitz or Tandem Shock. So it makes a lot of sense there. And oh. Double Tails from Brent. <laughs> now he's wishing that he had <laughs> Dede changed earlier. And let's not forget Francesco played one crushing hammer and hit heads. Brent played two crushing hammers and hit double tails. Going to be feeling a little bit aggrieved here. Of course, you know, going back to the last turn quickly, it is important to note the players always have access to more information than we do. Clearly, we didn't quite realise that there was a, a professor's research being held there and that does change the complexion of your turn. And it looks like Brent there just essentially played Marnie, attached an energy passed and then thank goodness Francesco flipped tails on crushing hammer but this is not a fast start from Brent at all here Francesco really does have all of the all the tempo here oh wow and he's even able to fire off a Marnie at the same time this is really fantastic for him he's gonna be able to uh full blitz here get a a ton of energies into play threatening multiple tag teams and making that bolt on more dangerous as well if you can get a bolt on ko on a pikachu and zekrom it really does skew that prize race and by the way this board is looking it could be something that actually happens this game absolutely i mean brent's basically got a turn or two to start getting something rolling francesco is going to absolutely run away with this game he's got seven energy on the board compared to brent's one and this is a part of the game where those crushing hammers become a lot less effective even if you go and flip ahead because there's just too much energy on the board and it's just so easy to start building up your attackers from there. So we see a quick ball for a Tapu Coco. This is going to get some more energy on the field. We see a crushing hammer. It's another Tails! That is not good. <laughs> That's really, really rough for Brent. And his only drawing option is Elder Gossing for Marnie so far. Uh, he's also going to need to find another attachment here if he's going to launch any attack at all with Dance of the Ancients. At the very least, uh, he can quick ball out some more targets here as well to full blitz onto because I think you're basically uh, ignoring and sacrificing your Raichu alone and Raichu at this point because it's already heavily damaged. So I think he'll be looking to full blitz onto different targets uh, here. And it uh, looks like the Tapu Coco V is going to be one of his main options. Yeah, I mean, it's not where you want to be, you know. If you're Elder Gossing for Amani on, what, turn three? That is that is not a great thing. But we've got the Quick Ball for a Crobat. We can start getting some stuff going here. We do need to see an attachment before we see a Dance of the Ancients, or at least in addition to. We do see the Speed Lightning Energy, so potentially getting a full Blitz here, just retreating the Raichu and Alolan Raichu, forcing Francesca to have a boss's orders to KO it. This is not really where you want to be, but like we saw in the previous game, Brent is a really, really good player. Going to make the most of it. Going to give himself the best opportunity here to get something rolling. But even down to the Ancients, there's an energy going down onto Crobat. That is not the target you're looking for. No, and uh, the Full Blitz as well, having to go onto a damaged Raichu alone Raichu, this is all kinds of awkward. <laughs> and Francesco with seven energies in play, if he gets to that eight energy... I believe that means Bolton can take a knockout cleanly on this Pikachu and Zekrom, which would be really, really horrific, and I think could be already putting him massively ahead. Yeah, an energy and a switch is all it's going to take here, and, you know, after you've taken three prizes off the Raichu and Alolan, excuse me, the Pikachu and Zekrom, there is a damaged Raichu and Alolan Raichu just sitting on the bench, ready to be KO'd. We did see a Speed Lightning, however, come down onto his own Raichu and Alolan Raichu, so we're going to need something like an energy switch, but instead, all we see is a boss's orders onto the Raichu and Alolan Raichu. We see the KO with Mewtwo and Mew, and going up by three prizes, it's going to be evened up pretty quickly, but I think Francesco's in a pretty good position here. Yeah, he essentially has put himself just requiring one energy on his Raichu and <laughs> Alolan Raichu to close out the game. So even when you're getting restamp uh, reset stamped to a lower hand size, when all you're requiring is energy cards, it's really not that bad. Now, he did full blitz and chose to attach no energies. So I guess that means there's only speed lightning energies left accessible here. So if Brent was able to fire off some crushing hammers, there's a way that he still can backdoor into this game. It's still very much in play. We are going to need to see some energy to Nile. We're going to, well, we're just going to have to see some comeback cards. Certainly playing Reset Stamp is a nice start here. And it looks like we're getting lots of energy moved around. We've got five on the Pikachu and Zekrom here. Has he used his attachment for the turn? Yeah, I think he already has attached. So I think, oh, oh wow, the Big Charm's a huge draw from him. That means he'll be able to take a hit from a Lightning Ride GX, even with full value, which is huge. Any Crushing Hammers as well on top just means that that Bolton is no longer a threat. 
Not able to draw any of those, unfortunately, but you can see he's tried to set himself up. If he can use a boss's orders next turn, he could boss's orders up the Bolton and take a four prize knockout with uh, the Bolton and the Dene both going down to a, a Tag Bolt GX. So he's put himself one turn away here. And now with that big charm, he's feeling a lot more safe. It's going to require um, a lot more from Francesco here. No, that was a really good turn. The big charm, absolutely huge. Raichu Lil and Raichu hits 250 with his GX attack, which is enough, but not with a big charm. And there's three prizes remaining, and there's nothing that's going to give up three prizes. So Brent's basically saying here, if you don't KO me and I have a boss's orders, I am going to win the game next turn. So, well, an energy, I suppose. So that is a really nice play there. Again, not going from a position of strength in the early game, but just setting up these strategies to go, look, if I can pull off this, this, and this, and you don't run perfectly, this is my route to victory here. And Francesco plays one new card from Vivid Voltage. Leon can deal an additional 30 damage. We're seeing a Crobat here digging for exactly that card. I'm pretty sure it's not in the discard pile just yet. So if he's able to get that Leon, that's the only card that could win him the game in this spot right now. Can I see a reset stamp from him, which tells you at the very least Leon's not currently in his hand. He may still have more digging to go. He might. We do have a boss's orders that Brent's got in hand here, which is pretty huge. Now, Cherish Ball... Oh, I was wondering if there was a Dedene left in the deck, but that search was so quick. There isn't a Dedene left in the deck, so... <laughs> with no Dedene and a Crobat already played, if he doesn't have Leon in hand, I don't think he's getting it. He has to paralyze. That's the good thing. The good news is he has the back out, uh, backup plan of paralyzing, and then it's a really specific combination for Brent to have. He would have to draw Speed Lightning that then gets him a switch card <laughs> to be able to win next turn. <laughs> exactly. Which is asking an awful lot at this stage. <laughs> So Francesco is still in a decent position here. The paralysis has to be done, I'm almost certain, if he doesn't have access to Leon here. Yeah, one of my favorite sayings in Pokemon is if you can't get a one-hit KO, get a two-hit KO with Disruption. You'd love to get a one-hit KO and end the game right now. You can't do it. So get a two-hit KO, but with Paralysis in the middle. So yeah, it's a two-hit KO, but you're forcing your opponent to have some kind of switching card. We do see a switch but there's no way to get that sixth energy at the moment. So it's boss's orders or it's a... Does he have enough energy? Is he one energy off? I think he's an attachment one... away. Yeah, Isn't I think it... he's got there with Boltund. Oh, the Boltund. I did not see the Boltund, of course. So we're going to see a Bolt Storm here, and that is going to do enough damage, just enough damage there to get the KO on the Raichu and Alolan Raichu. So didn't need that big GX attack play in the end. Boltund came through very nicely. It's what you can do when you absolutely flood the board with energy. <laughs> yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, Boltund is always a threat in the back, and... Uh... Brent certainly made that show there. Uh, I think he's done really well in that series, to be honest, to make the most out of some awkward situations. He was constantly allowing Francesco to take an advantage in different situations to then, you know, uh, reset stamp him down and disrupt him in different moments. So trying to make the opponent do a lot whilst working from the low hand size is always going to be a good strategy. And it's something that both Pikachu and Zekron players were doing quite well there. Yeah, I mean, you really saw a bit of a masterclass there of playing from behind. It wasn't going as well as he wanted it to. So it's just bide your time, set up your board. Boltund I find very interesting. When Boltund was first released in Rebel Clash, there were a bunch of people, myself included, who tried making ridiculous speed Boltund decks. And it soon became quite apparent that Boltund, as its own archetype, wasn't quite good enough. So you play it in these Pikachu and Zekrom decks, you got Electrify for the early game, you get more energy on the board, that's quite nice. But it's always there ready to bolt storm later on in the game it's only a two energy attack in a deck that generally plays energy switch anyway and if you can avoid chaos for a couple of turns get a couple of full blitzes off etc you actually end up finding out that you know you get to the late game there you can't pull off the really big tag bolt play but actually who cares about tag bolt look how much energy i've got on the board bolt hunt you're up yeah, and it's absolutely... I can see why people were trying to build completely around Bolton because he becomes such an all-star when you see him in the <laughs> Pikachu and Zekrom-based decks. You just think, surely we can make him work just on his own because he's just so incredible in these archetypes. But it's really the secret of Full Blitz. You go from Electrify into Full Blitz, suddenly you're getting towards 8, 9, 10 energy, and he just becomes ridiculous. He really is a powerful card that can <laughs> completely swing the game. Absolutely. So we did see the, the, the Battle of Pikachu and Zekroms there. 
And unfortunately, there could only be one winner. That was a winner's game, winner's bracket game, though, which is nice. It means we, we didn't eliminate anyone from the tournament.